Hey everyone, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and today I'm reviewing, well, another wine from 19 Crimes and Snoop Dogg. I saw they had a rosé. I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. I had to try it. So stay tuned for the 2020 19 Crimes Cali Rosé. Hey everyone, before I begin today's video, if you like it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, click that notifications bell, and share it with your friends. So, like I said, I, I saw this and I couldn't resist. The, the other wine was just so ridiculous that I felt like I had to buy a bottle of this to review. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Like I said, it's a 2020, it's 10.5% alcohol by volume, and it doesn't give a description at all about what the grapes. I tried to go to the 19 Crimes website. It wasn't listed there either, so who knows what is in this thing. Uh, however, first of all, screw top, plus one. And let's try out this wine. I'm interested, oh, that doesn't look like it's a natural color. Ah, uh, that, that is a funny uh, looking color. Oh, it's like neon pink. I would say <laughs> pale neon pink, no artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, so on the nose, I mean, it smells like rosé at least. I mean, it, it does have some of those elements there. You get a little bit of like raspberry, a little bit of strawberry. A touch, uh, just a touch of red cherry. That's ah, just very fruity. Maybe, maybe a hint of like orange juice concentrate. Just a little bit of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it has some stuff there, but it doesn't. It's not overly complex. Let's see how it tastes. One, high acid. Um, I'm bordering on whether this is medium dry or medium sweet. This has a reasonable amount of sugar to it. All the fruit flavors are there. The, there's a little bit of tartness in the flavors. I, I think it's more like a tart raspberry. No, no, maybe it's the raspberry. Yeah, tart raspberry, maybe a little bit of tart strawberry. But all the other flavors are there. They're just kind of blended with each other. There's, there's nothing outstanding about this in terms of the way it's balanced or anything. Other than the fact that, man, that, it, that does have a sugariness to it. <laughs> that, I also like gonna scrape my teeth. I knew it was gonna be sweet based upon the fact it was 10.5% ABV. There was, I just, they weren't gonna have everything fermented there. So, <laughs> it, it is a wine that you can enjoy on your own. If you're someone who is into sweeter rosés, sweeter wines, this is probably gonna be a wine that would be a good wine for you to enjoy. For me, it's it's it, I, I'm not a big fan of, of sweet wines, especially just pairing them with your average food. Um, I really kind of have to be in the mood for this. So in this case, there are a couple things I would do with this wine. Uh, first, sangria. I mean, using it as sangria would be good. Using it in a, a cocktail, a wine cocktail. So I did that whole gin and juice thing with the Cali Red. This could probably do the same thing with the Cali Rosé, and then. Maybe using it in some like marinade or some as a, like a cooking wine if you want to add a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of acidity, but some of these like fruity elements to it. Uh, you can marinate a pork chop in this. I mean, there's there's a couple things that you could do with it, but I'm just for me personally, I'm not someone who'd want to sit down and have a glass of this. But I don't know if it's bad enough to throw down to drain. But the only way to confirm that is to get to the blick. So in terms of the blick, I'm actually going to go ahead and and give you a point because looking at all of the information that I have on the label, I kind of expected it to be sweet. I kind of expected it to have a reasonable amount of acidity. It has a high amount of acidity while also being sweet. And the fact that it has that, it's just, it, it kind of allows it to be in balance. If it didn't have this level of acidity, then I didn't think, I don't, I don't think I would even say it was in balance. So overall, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a point because the acidity saved you on that. In terms of length, I get a long sugary note that kind of lingers, but it doesn't go fast medium minus, so uh, no points there. In terms of intensity, it's medium plus on the nose, it's medium plus on the palate, mostly because of that added effect from the acid. So I'll give you half a point. And then in terms of complexity, I'm only getting primary fruit. That is it, so no points there. In the end, that comes out to one and a half points. I'm gonna give you okay. Like I said, this is not my cup of tea, but for people who like sweeter rosé, sweeter wines, or you want to use it in any of those use cases that I mentioned, this 
it might not be a bad wine for you to pick up. I mean, in the end, it it's not a bad wine to try, especially if you're someone who is going to be kind of tasting around and experimenting with your palate. If, if you've never had a sweeter rosé, then it might not be a bad one to pick up just to taste and kind of understand what's going on here and kind of be able to catalog that in your mental schema. Uh, it's not too expensive, so that it has that going for it, but also, I mean, it's like I said, it's really not one you're just gonna sit there and, and just pound the glass on. Unless, of course, you do like sweeter wines. Anyway, this has been Stuart and the dog father, but not really, but it would be cool if you showed up on my channel one day. And like, for real, I'd have a glass of wine with you, Snoop. Maybe a whole bottle. We'll make it happen. With Wine on the Dime, if you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the 2020 19 Crimes Snoop Dog Cali Rosé? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime.